Autism be damned, I'm gonna make this video. Hello and welcome everybody. I am your devilishly handsome host RC, and this is the official Yandere Dev Iceberg. I will go ahead and already give a few disclaimers now and some trigger warnings. This will contain topics such as racism, sexual assault, pedophilia, transphobia, ableism, slur usage in general, so if you're not prepared for that kind of thing, I completely understand. Without further ado, I present the official Yandere Dev Iceberg. Lair 1 Yandere Simulator. This is the game that started it all. Yandere Simulator is what gave Alex the most notoriety and is currently his flagship game that most speculate will never be finished. There are a multitude of reasons for this, namely being that it's been in development since 2014 and it has shown very little, if any, progress. With the first boss of the game having only just recently been implemented in 2020. There are memes galore about how even at the end of humanity, Yandere Simulator will just never be finished. If else. If else is the code choice that Alex chooses to use. I'm not a coder, so this means very little to me, but from my understanding, it's not very optimized, it's clunky, it causes pretty laggy gameplay, um, and I've seen it been described as spaghetti code. But for some reason, Alex simply refuses to learn any code beyond if else. Bad. You don't seem very intelligent, so I don't wish to continue speaking with you. I'll include a few other notable phrases that Alex has used when talking to his fans, but a lot of people agree that he just has a really, really bad way of talking to people, and he doesn't seem very friendly to most of his fans. Volunteers. Instead of hiring anybody to actually work and professionally help with his game, Alex has just chosen and insisted on using volunteers who provide most of the game's assets, voice acting, art, music, and other necessary things to make a video game completely for free. Alex has stated multiple times he will not pay them because they're simply volunteers and they're working for free. Even though he has a Patreon, he still insists on just using volunteers. There's also been several incidents of volunteers leaving the project and speaking out against his behavior. A lot of them simply refuse to ever touch the project again after working closely with Alex. You may be thinking that Alex's the use of volunteers is due to a lack of funding. However, he has a Patreon. He makes roughly $4,000 a month currently, or allegedly working on the game which we all know he's not really doing. He considers his Patreon to just be his personal tip jar, nothing more. He simply refuses to invest any of the money back into the project, which you typically see when you subscribe to somebody's Patreon, you have a tendency to see the investment of your money being put back into the project or person that you're subscribed to, typically in higher production values. But in the case of Yandere Simulator, there has been no money from his Patreon put back into the project. He's been known to use the funds for personal use, including buying brand new video game consoles, PC supplies, and sex dolls. We'll get into that later. Lair 2. Starting off this lair with Love Letter, or the Love Letter Incident. This is going to be a hard one to sum up, but essentially when Yandere Dev was struggling to make a barely playable version of the game, someone made a working version in about two weeks. There was a huge fight and a lot of drama, and essentially the new game is no longer in development. Like I said, I'm giving you the bare minimum here as to what actually happened, because if I were to focus on this, it would be an entire video of its own. Tiny Build There was a time long ago that Tiny Build offered to help Alex with his development hell of a game. However, things took a negative turn. Alex hired them to improve the code of his game, but when they began to actually improve the code, he fired them for improving the code. He claimed that they parted ways and left on good terms, but when his emails were leaked, they found that he actually had owed them $31,000 that Tiny Build essentially dropped simply because they did not want to deal with him anymore. Stolen Art and Assets When he doesn't have a volunteer to provide assets for his game for free, he's been known to simply steal them. Several stolen assets have been found in Yandere Simulator with mar watermarks having been removed most notably a grass texture. 
I do want to say though, in my research, I did find that this has changed and there has been little stolen art or assets found in the game, which is good. However, I think that some more changes in his personal lifestyle are needed. Alex, stop being a fucking creep. Fandom wiki. This is another one that's going to be pretty hard to summarize because again, if I were to give you the whole spiel, it would be an entire video on its own. But essentially, it begins with a meme on the Yansim wiki and Alex removing said meme and then getting admin bonked for removing a user's message. Um, Alex got mad that the rules applied to him and then he made a post bashing the admins and the Yansim wiki, leaving the wiki completely behind. Mike Z. Alex had been heavily inspired by Skullgirls and really looked up to the dev, Mike Z. This is until Mike heavily criticized a game that Yandev had made to show off. Alex took the criticism pretty poorly and turned this into what I like to call his Joker moment. Lair 3. Starting off with Panty Shot Currency. Within most games, there exists a form of currency that's pretty common, but Yansim it takes it a little differently. You use taking pictures of high schoolers' underwear as currency. In Yansim, you must take a photo of a high school girl's underwear in order to receive useful information. Many people take issues with this considering the girls are, again, in high school and likely underaged. Alex has given incredibly conflicting statements regarding the age of the students, but regardless, they're still high schoolers and it's still an like, active act of sexual harassment. I also remember you could equip different underwear to get different stat boosts for the day. Now, generally, this isn't a bad concept if the main character weren't a high schooler. And finally, along the same lines, we have the inventory system being... Once again, this girl's underwear. Jesus, Alex, why are, what is with you in teenagers' underwear specifically? Suicide baiting. Alex has a history of threatening suicide quite often. It's not typically the sign of a mentally well-adjusted person, and if he would seriously kill himself over a game that he's developing, I personally think that he should seek some professional help. This is even traced back to his Gaia days when he would threaten suicide just because girls didn't really take an interest to him. He felt that if he couldn't get a girlfriend, then what was the use in living in this world? Racism. There are several instances of racism or racial sensitivity committed by Alex. More prominently is his fetishization of Japanese culture. It's not a crime to make a game set in Japan, but when you only use popular anime, manga, and video games as your source, people are likely going to think that you're fetishizing the country. There was also an incident where he in implemented Corona-chan, a personified version of the coronavirus in Chinese clothing, into his game. Many Chinese people have spoken out about how Corona-chan being dressed in Chinese clothing is insane. Sensitive. But don't worry, Alex the white man says it's okay. There was also an incident where Alex sets up a racist joke on Chat Tango, but when nobody finishes the joke, he just goes ahead and does it himself. And more recently, in 2015, he had promised to 4chan that he would never add any people of color to the game because it would be catering to SJWs. He claims he's open to diversity in his game, but he fears ridicule from 4chan for pandering. I really don't understand how adding diversity is pandering, but somebody's probably going to write a comment that says, of course you have pink hair and pronouns anyway, so I... whatever. Discord speedruns. There was a trend of tireless trolls joining the Discord server and official Reddit of Yansim only to attempt to get banned as fast as possible. You could do nearly anything to get banned from saying else if to simply asking how the game was going. He even has a list of blocked words to try and fight against the trolls. DID is cringe. Alex had one point banned a moderator for the server simply because they had disassociative identity disorder. Alex claims that the illness is made up in cringe roleplay. He doesn't seem to think that it actually exists. I personally was unaware that Alex was a professional licensed psychologist and could just suddenly decide that a real life mental illness was fake, but here we are. After backlash, he did try to backpedal a bit, as he usually does, but he somehow managed to sound even more of an ignorant asshole. It was weird. Lair 4 Ava Zephon 
Ava Zephon simply refers to the username Alex had used online before he became Yandev. The reason it's in layer 4 is because I realize not a lot of people actually realize that they're the same person. The origins of the name is Ava, which is a reference to Ava Gellion, and Ze uh, Ra Zephon, which was an anime that Alex was convinced was a ripoff of Ava Gellion. This was the source of multiple rants he had on different anime websites, and most people hated it every single time he brought it up. Seriously, I don't know why he kept bringing it up when people hated when he talked about it. The Chalice. When Alex was 14, he uploaded a video proposing a toast to a friend who had successfully pirated Dota. It's been the face of hundreds of memes aimed at Alex to make fun of him. I don't really think the video in of itself is super notable in my opinion, just a kid shouting a friend out. Yandere-chan in Hentai Games. Alex has collaborated with Hentai Games to license the use of Ayano out into their porn games. Her age is still debatable, but many people took issues with it mainly because the main demographic of Yandere Simulator is underaged girls. Lair 5. DeviantArt. Alex's old DeviantArt posts are a world of problems. He was indeed 18 around the same time that he was lamenting the fact that submissive anime girls should be taken advantage of, amongst other notable posts generally being creepy towards women, showing a trend that we all still see today. Accepting nudes from a minor. We only know about this event from Alex's point of view, which has been proven to be incredibly warped from the truth, so take this with a grain of salt as I couldn't really find much info. But the story goes, Alex was in contact with a girl who claimed to be 18, but he admitted that she didn't look 18 and she didn't really act 18. This girl had sent out nude photos to him and a bunch of other people, he claims in a way of getting attention. Alex says that he deleted the pictures after finding out that she was not 18, but in my opinion, if somebody doesn't act mature and they don't look mature, I wouldn't keep the photos to begin with. But again, we only know this from his point of view, so we really don't know exactly what happened. 4chan. It's nearly impossible for me to summarize Alex's activity on 4chan, so I'll include a montage of posts across the screen here. Gaia Online Similar to 4chan, Alex had a wide range of activity on Gaia Online. However, it's a bit easier to summarize. 